Well, here we go again. Trying to go fishing, if I can get out of the driveway. It's getting to be about time for me to mow the grass again. Hold on! Oh, crap. <laughs> Everybody in one piece? Anyway, today we are going to do something I haven't gotten the chance to do, or haven't bothered to do all summer. Let's go fish dry flies. I've been fishing so much bass, smallmouth and a little bit of largemouth, that I just... I usually don't fish trout during the summer. Um, a lot of reasons. It's, it's crazy around here. People go nuts. Like from mid-spring to... I don't know, July, September, just people are choking the waterways around here for trout. And, you know, you're not... Fishing for trout in hot, hot weather is not really great, you know? One, it sucks. You're probably not going to catch much. Two, it's very bad for the fish. You know, above 68 degrees, very unhealthy. You put a lot of stress on a trout when you catch and release, hopefully release, a trout those kind of water temperatures so during the summer I just I don't bother like I get away from the crowds I don't mess with the fish and there's plenty of other stuff to do namely smallmouth but we've gotten a bunch of cooler weather a whole bunch of not a whole bunch but a, a little bit of rain and good local trout stream is supposed to be fishing pretty well it's supposed to be cooled off oh come on we're going around this guy so that's where we're headed. One of my favorite types of dry flies to fish is terrestrials. And if you don't know, terrestrials refer to insects that live on the earth. That's a, you know, silly way to put it, but terrestrial means basically not an aquatic fly. So we're talking about things like ants, beetles, grasshoppers, uh, stuff like that inchworms, things that live in trees or on the ground that could fall into the water, get swept into the water. And that's why one of the best times to use terrestrials, I've found, is right after a rainstorm, or even during a rainstorm, because bugs get washed into the water. So you've got ants and beetles getting knocked out of trees into the water during the rain, and then immediately after there's a bunch of them floating around, Everyone is driving like an idiot today. Come on. You can do it. There you go. Oh my gosh. Anyway, right after a rainstorm is a great time to fish terrestrials, and that's what we are doing today. Uh, it rained this morning for, I don't know, a couple hours. I thought it was going to rain all day. I was going to head out and maybe swing a streamer or something. But because we got some rain and, I don't know, I'm feeling frisky, I haven't fished dry flies in long time um we're gonna try that see if i can remember how to do it and if not i think i brought like one streamer so we can always try that but the water should be pretty low and pretty clear so I, it's not great for fishing streamers anyway so we'll try terrestrials see what happens i've got a small spring creek spring fed it's freezing cold year round, 55 degrees, give or take, 52, 53, and that's always got fish in it. The problem with that creek is it is heavily, heavily pressured. So the fish in there are just like crazy well educated. Like you can walk over top of them and not put them down, but they will never eat. Like they're so used to people. We, we can take a look at that, and then that flows into a larger body of water, which I would prefer to fish. Uh, not spring-fed, but it gets a little boost of cold water from that spring creek, and that's helpful. So the temperature should be all right. It should be in, you know, I got a thermometer. We'll take a look when we get there, but temperature should be good. So see where we can find some fish, and uh, see if we can get them to eat some ants or beetles. I'm actually excited, and it's nice because this will be the first time, first, oh, my rod is making all kinds of crazy noise, first time in a long time I've actually fished dry flies, so let's hope I don't suck at it. Something else, 
Oh gosh, we're never getting through this intersection. Come on. Yeah. Anyway, something else I've been really enjoying doing the last, well, probably all summer, or maybe this entire year, uh, having rods assembled and rigged up in the car. If you've got a vehicle that's long enough and you can put a nine foot or an eight foot or a 10 foot fly rod inside the car rigged up ready to go, it just saves you so much time and hassle. Like I know you can get a rod vault, but I have never been able to justify the cost of that. Like the only, no, nah, I'm not even gonna get into it. If you can afford a rod, a rod vault, if you can justify the cost of that, awesome. I, that's a great way to hit the water faster. But if you've got a car that lets you put, you know, full length fly rods in it, do it. Do it. I used to have a Ford Freestyle, which is this goofy uh, crossover SUV minivan kind of thing. Good thing about it was the car's like 40 feet long, so I could fit 11 foot switch rods in it, you know, fully assembled. It was awesome. Now, this is a RAV4. It's a little bit smaller than that. Okay, it's a lot smaller than that. But I can still get, there's an, this is an eight and a half foot four weight sitting in here. And I can, I can put nine foot rods in here too. Get a little bend in them, but nothing crazy. And it's just so easy to get where you're going and fish. Especially now, I mean, it's, it's hot out. I mean, well, it's not hot. The car says it's 81. So I'm wet waiting. I might regret that. <laughs> we'll see. But I can, I'm going to get there, throw on a chest pack and a belt with my net on it, and I'm good. Like, that's all I have to do. Like, there is something about getting to a river and, you know, gearing up, putting your waders on, rigging your rods. But especially if you're fishing by yourself, like, I'm just, I'm ready to go. Like, let's get there and let's do it. I don't want to screw around, stand around in the parking lot for 40 minutes. There's something to make you more efficient because... You know, you're not catching fish unless there are flies in the water. spot my dude <laughs> gotcha. No, 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 no. Kind of upset with me, aren't you? Well, that actually worked out pretty well. I ended up fishing that Amy's aunt for 
great majority of the afternoon. Um, caught a fish on it pretty quick, and then I was kind of committed to it. And then I didn't catch a fish for quite a little while there. I kept having fish come up, refuse it, splash on it, come right up under the surface and look at it. So I was keeping hope alive. Then I found some fish that were sitting deep and I put a dropper on it. I hooked two of them and both times I wasn't paying attention, didn't get the hook set like an idiot. You'll have this. I tried a beetle, I tried a regular tiny little ant. No no real luck with that. Um, couldn't tell you why, maybe uh, it's just a hopper day. I decided to call it quits. I walked up out and figured I'd fish that little spring creek for a couple minutes before I left. And I was only there for two or three minutes. I caught that brookie, which was an awesome little way to finish the day out. I'll have to do some more dry fly fishing sometime soon, because that is, uh, that was fun. Uh, it's a little frustrating. It's one of those things where, like, fish are fickle. And, you know, someday, maybe tomorrow, they wouldn't eat that a hopper pattern, period. It's just one of those things where you have to go often enough to get a feel for what's going on which is the hard part you have to devote time to it but yeah maybe we'll try that again sometime soon thanks for watching